It's a beautiful night for football. Welcome to O.Co. Coliseum as the Raiders kick off the 2015 NFL season, taking on the St. Louis Rams. Hello, everyone. I'm JT, and the last time the Raiders took this field, they won their third consecutive home game over the Buffalo Bills and built some much-needed momentum heading into 2015. The Jack Del Rio era begins tonight, and Coach Del Rio returns to the Bay Area with a very impressive coaching staff and stack that on to another rock-solid draft. The excitement level is at an all-time high for the Raider Nation. I'm excited to welcome the broadcast team legendary linebacker Matt Millen, Hall of Fame wide receiver Tim Brown, and play-by-play -play voice Beth Mullins. Beth, you're surrounded by Raider royalty tonight. Well, you're absolutely right, JT. And with all the changes on the field at its heart, it's still about the Raider family. And uh, in a nation of silver and black, I think one exception is okay for gold on this particular oh, occasion. Oh, this little thing, I just happened to pick it up last <laughs> week a little place I was at. And Matt Miller, we might have you break out your uh, Super Bowl rings the next time we're with yeah, you. i got a couple for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, let's start out with this offense. And it's year two under yeah. the direction of Derek Carr, who had a terrific rookie season with Oakland and now surrounded by a lot of new weapons. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's been a long time since the Raiders have had weapons like this, probably since a couple of guys that uh, I knew were here back in the day. When you look at Amari Cooper, this is a kid who could absolutely get it done. I've said since I've seen him that this is a kid on day one should be explosive for the Raiders. He just has to settle down and understand this is football. It is not anything different. And once he does that, his talent will come out and he'll be he'll be great. Crabtree, Michael Crabtree is a guy who has played this game at a very high level. All he needs to do is get back to that form that he was at uh, a few years ago. And if he can do that, being the veteran leader of this team, he'll definitely be able to get something done. When you look at Derek Hart, this is a guy who played great as a rookie. However, we know, Matt, that the biggest change from an NFL player is from the rookie year to the second year because all of a sudden this game becomes very easy. As well as he played last year, I believe he will play better this year and lead this team to some big things down the, down the line. All right, well, uh, Matt, from the quarterback on the offensive side, one of the guys leading the charge on the defensive side, also a second-year player in Khalil Mack. He is on the move up to the front line, and he, too, has a lot of help that has arrived around him. Yeah, and he's going to have to be able to improve upon what he did just a year ago. Khalil Mack had a, had a fantastic rookie year, and he showed that he can rush the passer. He showed that he was great against the run. But don't forget, they're studying him all season long. So he'll have to up his game. And there's a part of his game that can be up. That's the good news. He still has some upside, and he's got to take those steps. The good news for him is he doesn't have to do it all alone, particularly in the run game. Curtis Lofton is a guy they brought in from New Orleans. Curtis Lofton is about 245 pounds. He's a thumper. He's a two-down player. He's a guy who will solidify the middle of that defense. And remember, a year ago, Raiders had some trouble inside. I think Curtis Lofton solves that trouble. And certainly, as JT alluded to, a lot of excitement here in Oakland. They won their last three home games of last season, looking to carry over that momentum into a new year under new head coach Jack Del Rio. It is the preseason opener for the Oakland Raiders hosting the St. Louis Rams as the new edition of the Silver and Black takes the field. Here on the Raiders television network, Beth Mullins, Tim Brown, Matt Millen, Nicole Zalumis, JT the Brick with you. And a lot of enthusiasm and optimism about the brand new season. And first things first, at the Al Davis Memorial Torch, Longtime athletic trainer, it was a surprise for H. Rod Martin to be able to light the torch tonight. Please welcome H. H. Martin. Martin. And what a terrific moment for him, familiar with both Matt Millen as well as Tim Brown, and now down to the field, here's Nicole Zalumis. Thank you, Beth. Are we sure that this is a preseason game? Because there is a lot of energy on this field right now. I can feel it. Nobody can feel it more than Jack Del Rio. Jack is back, and pride is on the line. He grew up here. This is a place that he played. He was a three-sport athlete at Hayward High. He was an exceptional athlete, and now tonight, He'll step on this field as head coach of the Oakland Raiders. I talked to Jack earlier this week. I asked him if he approaches this gig differently than other coaching jobs, and he said, absolutely, there's a lot more pressure.
pride here. Nobody comes home to get their brains beat out. So Jack Del Rio is giving the Oakland Raiders his heart and soul, and you see it already. You'll see it throughout the season. Back up to you guys. Well, you're absolutely right, Nicole. A little bit extra special for Jack Del Rio to return to the Bay Area. His father, a longtime Raider fan, and he's talked about bringing back the swagger, guys, and making the Oakland Raiders a contender again in the very near future. Well, you know, the, the only way you're going to have swagger is you've got to have players, and uh, that's what they've been able to do. They've been able to bring in some players. Uh, I was talking to Reggie during the week, and he says, hey, we're a much bigger football team now. We're a much more athletic football team. So from that standpoint, it gives you an opportunity to go out and play better football, and then you can bring that swagger back. And swagger really shows up when you put some W's. <laughs> yeah. You put them W's up, yeah, then you start to feel good about yourself. This is a young team. That the biggest thing for this team is they've got to start strong because confidence changes everything. And when they start to become confident, that's why it shows up. And it will start with Derek Carr in his second season at the helm. After setting all the Oakland records for a rookie quarterback, he will have to wait for his moment. St. Louis winning the toss. They've elected to receive. Sebastian Janikowski is out there. Getting set to start his 16th year in a Raider uniform. And, Tim, that actually ties your franchise record. And uh, yeah. on the uh, fourth game of the regular season, he will tie your mark for most games played as well. Got to be special. You know, it's a kicker, though. So it's a Thank different. You. I just got to say, it don't really count. That. That's it's a, a kicker. kicker. <laughs> <laughs> right. Underway in a brand new preseason. And Janikowski will boot it into the stands. Got a big leg, always has. And so the Raiders will send their defensive unit out there first to face uh, the new guy in town for the Rams at quarterback, one of the big blockbuster offseason moves. Nick Foles coming to St. Louis and Sam Bradford heading to Philadelphia. They're really excited about having Foles in the fold. They like his game, obviously, but they still have to learn him, and he's still learning this offense. So this is a big deal for him right now in this opening game. This is a young offensive line for the Rams and a defensive front for the Raiders that has talked a lot, a lot about bringing more pressure and getting after the quarterback this season. And Foles will throw on first down, and he completes it upfield and out across the 45 to his tight end, Lance Kendricks. This is going to be pretty interesting for the Raiders' defense. They've been going up against all these big uh, offensive players, receivers, and now they're going to have a lot of, a lot of small guys that they're going to have to uh, cover. Let's check out the Lazy Boy starting lineups for the Rams. It's a young group other than Saffold, the only veteran up there. Brown and Havenstein on the right side are both rookies. They've got good tight ends and Cook and Kendricks. And Foles, the receiver screen to Tavon Austin. And look at the moves for Austin. Inside the 30, staying on his feet. D.J. Hayden will finally run him out of bounds inside the 20. And a 35-yard pickup for the third-year man out of West Virginia. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's a different receiver group that they've been going up against in training camp. All, all, the Brit with a, a great block on that particular play. But when you, when you see this defense or this offense, you really have to play differently because these are scat backs. These are not big 6 4 five, six, uh, receivers. Yeah, that's that's just you got to be smart about that. Anytime you have Tavon Austin in space, you know they're getting him the ball. Good start for Nick Foles too in his debut. He's got Trey Mason behind him. We do not expect to see Todd Gurley, their high draft choice out of Georgia, in the backfield in their opener. Here is Mason, one of their top rushers from a year ago, gets inside the 15. How about the Raiders' defensive line? There you see it, the move for Khalil Mack from linebacker up to end. And Ellis and Williams, meat and potatoes as they're calling themselves this season. Armstrong, Lofton, and Smith, the starters at backer in the secondary. They've decided to stay with the young corners and Hayden and Carey and give them a shot alongside the veterans Woodson and the new addition Nate Allen coming over from Philadelphia in the free agency market. This is Mason, a couple of cuts, and he's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. 
Jelly Ellis was down at the bottom of the pile, and Malcolm Smith, the former Super Bowl MVP up in Seattle, now in his first action with Oakland. Williams and Ellis on the inside, those are the two guys you're going to watch. Time out on the field. They control the middle. And when you have control of the line of scrimmage, you can establish a point. That frees everybody else up around them. They're going to be counting on both these guys here this season. Meat and potatoes because they run collectively 665 pounds inside and certainly they want to plug up those holes and allow the defensive ends and linebackers to do their thing. Well, Justin better not stand too close to the line of scrimmage. He might be offside. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, terrific last year after winning the job in week three and now alongside Williams one of the big free agent pickups for new defensive coordinator Ken Norton Jr. He's calling plays for the first time coming down from Seattle as a linebacker coach it's third and four for Foles and he's throwing the fade for the corner of the end zone incomplete and on the coverage over there was T.J. Carey. They were looking for Jared Cook, the tight end. Nice job by T.J. Carey. See, he takes away the inside. He's going to force that receiver to have to go through him. Well, he was it looks like a little position. I'm not going to say this often. It looked like a little wide receiver pass in the field. You know, I've never, ever heard you say that before. At the time, at the time of that, Matt. I'm writing it down right now, but A defensive back was right. Greg Zerline is on to attempt uh, the kick here for the Rams, a 31-yarder. It was 24-30 a year ago for St. Louis. And this one is true. The first drive for St. Louis gets points on the board, aided by that 35-yard play to Tavon Austin. But Oakland holds down in the red zone and only gives up the triple. Welcome back to the Raiders Football Network. The Rams scoring on their first possession, but the Raiders holding them to just the three points. And now an opportunity for the offense to head out there for the first time in the new year for head coach Jack Del Rio, the 19th coach in franchise history, has added so much. And uh, Mark Davis also making sure that this new coaching staff had everything they needed to try and be successful. One of the things they're looking for this year is a new return man, and Trendon Holiday will get the first crack at it, bobbles it in the end zone, and he'll have to sit on it. Looked like he was a little eager to bring that yeah. one out from about eight, so <laughs> a little bit better that he left it down. So here we go with Derek Carr, the second year man out of Fresno, and the first Oakland rookie quarterback to start every game. And his numbers, 21 touchdowns with the 12 interceptions, threw for over 3,000 yards. And a lot of new guys around him, and it will start right with the very first snap. And the new addition of Rodney Hudson at center. And the new starting tailback, Latavius Murray, behind him. And the Raiders open up with a two tight end set, and the first give is to Murray out to the 23 yard line. TJ McDonald with the stop. Checking out the offensive lineup and the starters brought to you by Lazy Boy. Live life comfortably. Ken Jackson and Hudson real strong on the left side. There's some competition on the right side. Jamarcus Webb and Menelik Watson getting the start. Crabtree and Cooper, the new wide receivers. Michael Rivera gets the start at tight end. And there's some good competition, some good depth at that position as well. Carl out of the empty set, and his first pass is completed for a first down to the rookie Amari Cooper. And our first chance of Coop here at the Coliseum. What? Watching him on that route, he did a very good job in the dirt, getting his feet up under him, and turning around, getting back to the ball. It's very difficult to play on that dirt and trying to run routes, so he did a very good job. That's his first time doing it. And as you're seeing the Lazy Boy lineups for the St. Louis Rams, notably absent Chris Long. Now he's uh, not getting the start, not probably going to see any action tonight in the preseason. Again to the air, and again it's Cooper trying to give him a little space on the edge. He reset 
all the records at the University of Alabama in just his three seasons. And he comes in, guys, when you talk about the just win mentality of Al Davis, comes in with a national championship on his belt. Yeah, this, uh, this kid has had a lot of success in college. He did a great job. Got better every year. That's the thing I love about him. I remember when I saw him in, De in December at the high school, I told him, I hope the Raiders are there for you uh, to pick you because uh, I believe you'd be great in silver and black. He's to the top of your screen. Crabtree now in motion as the Raiders work out of the eye. And they run it. And some running room for Murray as he bounces to the outside. And a first down. 17 yards going up against one of the top defensive fronts in the NFL. Well, the difference you're going to see this year with this Raider offensive line is right in the middle of Rodney Hudson. Takes over for Stefan Wisniewski. He's a different player. He's a better player, to be frank with you. But Latavius Murray, what do he call himself? The Tay Train. Tay Train. Tay Train. Tay Train got it rolling right now. <laughs> he's got some great speed. He's a high-cut guy, and he's got he's got to just get his pads down a little bit, but he's got he's got some game. Here's the deep man in the eye behind Reese Cooper is the motion man. He'll get the flip. He'll get the corner. And down to the 42-yard line and out of bounds there. I have to tell you, I'm a little surprised that they're working him this much in the yeah. first preseason game of the year. But I know they want to get him going, but at the same time, boy, I, I tell you, it's just a little risky to me to be doing so much with him so early. Yeah, well, Tim, I'll tell you one, two things jump out at me about Amari Cooper. He's a smart football player. I saw that his freshman year at Alabama. Second thing is he's wearing the wrong number. He should be wearing 81. <laughs> that just don't look right. He, he reminds me of you. I, I've said that for years. 81 right there is the motion man. The tight end, Rivera, as Cooper sports the 89. Out to the left side. Edge rush coming from the Rams. They'll run away from it. And down to the 40-yard line goes Murray. What a difference for Latavius Murray, finally healthy after having to overcome injuries his first couple of seasons. I tell you, it's amazing watching him run. He is a very big man to be playing in the running back position, but he has the ability to make those little cuts uh, in the middle of the, of the crowd right there, and doing that is really going to help this Raider offense out tremendously. What's really going to help this Raider offensive line is what they're doing right now. Most of the league has gone to zone blocking scheme. The Raiders aren't doing that. They're mostly all angles. This is Trent Richardson in right now yep. at 33. And, and pull it. And that's where Rodney Hudson makes them better. Carr with the slant for the first down. The catch by Kimbrough Tompkins to move the chains. Oh, by the way, did I mention that, uh, that Carr's not a bad player? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, he is. You could see it at the end of last year, Tim. And where you saw it was the game wasn't too big for him. He right. thought he belonged. That's a huge part of any player, but particularly a quarterback. And it looks like he's picking up where he left off a year ago. That, that looks nice. And a little bit of a wrinkle, too, from new offensive coordinator Bill Musgrave. He'll get Reese slotted left, the fullback becoming a receiver. Got him on the cross. Play action. Cooper on the near sideline, knocked out there. There were times this week up in Napa at training camp uh, that uh, Bill Musgrave, Derek Carr had that kid in the candy store kind of look with all the new guys around them that can make plays. You know, one of the things you have to do, you have to open up your offense and allow these guys to be able to do what they're capable of doing. And, and that's what the Raiders had done in years past. I thought they were ultra conservative, but Musgrave is going to open this thing up for them and, and get it going. He can he can do that, Beth, because he has some players he can open up with. He's come full circle. His first job was as a quarterback coach there is. in Oakland. And there they are trying to set up the screen, and the pass was behind Murray. As he, they couldn't connect. And the drive now that started from their own 20-yard line, the 10th play of the drive coming up, and it's third and two for Derek Carr and company. Crabtree and Murray now, the tailback will line up wide right. Cooper and Tompkins to the near side. Car trying to go over the top for Crabtree and it's batted down. Good coverage in the secondary. Tremaine Johnson. Crabtree did, did not get the release that he exactly. needed to get for this uh, particular play. He got held up a little bit. I think Carr should have came off of him and went to the underneath receiver here. 
Uh, this is all about the release. If he doesn't get a release, he has to come up for him and go to the underneath receiver. Sebastian Janikowski to attempt attempt now for Janikowski, 44 yards. With John Condor snapping, Marquette King holding. And Seabass knocks it through to tie it up at three apiece. 7.20 to go here in the first quarter, the season opener, uh, preseason here for the Rams and the Raiders. An 11 play scoring drive, uh, just over five minutes. Derek Carr, three of five on the drive. Amari Cooper, three catches for 22 yards. And then the Janikowski 44 yard field goal to tie things up. Nice start by Carr and a nice job of them going to Cooper early. Trying to establish that connection. The two youngsters, the second year guy and the rookie out of Alabama. They spent some extra time on their own over the summer to get better acquainted. Crabtree also did the same thing, went to uh, Bakersfield to spend some extra time with Derek Carr. Georgia Tavecchio will kick it off now for Oakland. Chris Givens is the deep man. And Givens will take a knee. Raider defense will head back out there, and it looks like uh, some of the starters are trekking back out onto the field. We'll return to Oakland, even at three after this. I think with Cooper, I, I think uh, uh, he's very much like Tim Brown. Very explosive, uh, got speed to burn, and uh, going to really strike the fear into uh, the opposing team. Well, that's very nice for my dear friend Jerry Rice mm -hmm. to say, you know, I, I don't want to put any pressure on Cooper. I think this kid is going to be great. But I don't want him to think about breaking Tim Brown's records or being like Tim Brown. He's going to be his own man. He's going to be a great receiver in his own right. Nick Foles will stay out there at quarterback for the Rams on their second possession. And he will throw the completion. Not in the flat. Kenny Britt with the nice pickup. Raiders defensively have to generate more than Khalil Mack as a pass rusher. They've got to be able to develop somebody else. Right now, they got some young guys, but they're not on the field right now. And so Mack, and Mack also, part of his game, he still has to be able to learn how to get an off, uh, offensive lineman off balance. He's got a great first step, and he, he has a nice stutter, but he's still in the learning process as well. He's added some weight in order to prepare for his new role. And running right into Lofton and Dan Williams. On that carry was Benny Cunningham. We are, by the way, also getting our first look at the other rookie up front, Mario Edwards out of Florida State, who is now in the ball game. Uh, that's just a nicely done job across the board. This defense is going to have to be a disciplined scheme. And when I say that up front, it comes down to defending the gap. And that's this is the gap front. And th that was played exceptionally well. Well, they had a nice third down stop uh, against the Rams down in the red zone. Here we go on third and one. And Cunningham picks up the necessary yardage. And a five-yard gain. It was Asante that had to come up from his safety spot to make the hit. When we talk about that Raider defense uh, wanting to be better against the run, and Ken Norton Jr. has brought in so much enthusiasm, so much energy. Got some new guys around him. Right up the heart of that defense when you talk about Williams and Lofton <laughs> and Nate Allen, the new addition at safety. Ian Woodson can be interchangeable there with free and strong. Great action from Foles. And the pass incomplete overthrowing his target. That was TJ Carey again on the coverage of Tavon Austin. To me, I like that Carey kid. Carey, is, he's gotten better. Yeah, the more, the more I watched him in training camp, the more I liked him. He had the ability to be able, in man coverage, he was pretty good. He gets his hand, when he gets his hands on you, He's even better. Ken Norton will, will learn his players. Keep that in mind, Beth. Right now, there's a huge learning curve going on for the coaching staff, which is new, to learn what their players can do. And that's what these games are really about. Second and ten to get the 
Cunningham who's caught from behind by Mayoa down to the 40 yard line. You talked about that learning curve and a guy like TJ Carey now the different mentality as a starter and a different approach for him and also a guy that may be able to stay a little bit fresher defensively because he may not have to handle kick and punt return duties this year like he had to a year ago. And this is when Carey has got to be good and I'll be anxious to see how Ken Norton plays this because this is a this third and four third and five area you got to get some kind of matchup either man or a matchup zone you're going to show something but it's got to be tight coverage. They're definitely playing zone. They have Tavon Austin being covered by Ray Ray Armstrong, yes, so it better be zone. Slide at the bottom of the screen and falls as flags fly, goes down. Jelly Ellis was the guy that got there. We got one in the backfield, which is a good sign for us, and then got one in the defensive secondary, which is a bad sign. Watch like, Mack off the top. He does a nice job of coming back inside. There fouls against both teams that will offset. Holding, offense, number 73. Holding, defense, number 56. By rules, these penalties will offset. Replay, third down. Number 57 is a correction on defense. Well, and those were the two matchups. Yeah. Mack got held, and then that was Ray Ray trying to hang on to Tavon. Why Ray Ray? I'm sure it's matched up on Tavon Austin. I don't know. That could not have been the defense. Uh, Norton wanted to be in. Our referee tonight, Tony Correnti, with the call. And then again, third down and four. Keep your eyes on Khalil Mack. This last, this previous down had a great rush. You can't be an effective outside rusher if you don't take the inside. He took the inside that time, which usually sets up the outside move. He will be coming off the right edge. The rookie Max Vallis right on the up. left edge. Falls. Backpedaling and down he goes. Shelby Harris with the sack. Shelby may have gotten the sack, but that was all set up by Khalil Mack. Yeah, it was. Uh, that pressure that he got made Foles go outside and right into... Shelby's hands. Watch what he does. He goes with power. So he set up the inside, but he broke him down and broke down the pocket. And then Harris, watch him. Take, step outside, then come right down the middle of the man. That collapsed the pocket, and here comes Harris. The 14-yard loss, the sack, the pressure from the Raider defense. Just 22 sacks all last year. The second lowest number in the league, and one of the things they wanted to improve upon for the upcoming season, a flag and a delay of game penalty Five against the Rams. Name, fourth down. You know, that Harris shows up on tape. He shows up in training camp. He runs around, he's got good movement, hmm. and you can't teach that. He has what you can't teach. And when you couple that with some power moves from the outside, it can be effective. But that was, you said it, Tim, you said it right. That was all uh, a cool Mack and breaking that thing down. Seventh round pick last season, trying to make the squad. He was on the practice team a year ago, and that's a towering boot. Holiday will have a chance. Out across the 30, down the sideline, and beyond the 40, a 60-yard punt, and Holiday will get 22 yards of it back. 22 yards. He's an exciting little journey. guy with an emphasis on little. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Key. That guy, you could Only stand there and use him as an elbow. I mean, <laughs> supports your elbow. He's a, he is not a tall man, but he is an exciting runner. Great yeah. returner. They'll like him. It's just you'll fall in love with Holiday. He'll make some plays. Well, he was the first guy in NFL history to have punt return and kick return touchdowns in a playoff game a few years back. And they brought him in almost immediately after their draft choice out of Florida, Andre Holy DuBose. Team number 23. Take it back. Oakland has exercised the option of accepting the 10-yard penalty at the end of the play. First down. After Andre DeBros had the Achilles injury. So we will take a timeout. Just over three minutes to go here in the first. All even at three apiece. You know, this is uh, an honor you just can't even uh, think about. I mean, you... You play great football, but you don't ever look at yourself as being somebody who could be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, it's been a lot of work, but it's been incredible work, and I, I can't wait to enjoy this for the rest of my life. Well, and uh, truly an honor 
Mm. And a joy for us to be in the booth with you, Mr. Raider Tim Brown. Earlier this month in Canton, he inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And the Raiders will go back to work. First string is still out there. Derek Carter, Crabtree, who makes a defender miss and lands awkwardly. And appears to have popped up okay. 15 yards for number 15. As we go back to the hall call of Tim Brown, the all-time leader. Nobody's been in silver and black for more games than you have, Tim. And still sixth all-time in NFL history in receiving yards. Nine times a Pro Bowler now into the Hall of Fame. I tell you, you know, I, I uh, owe a lot of credit to this great fan base here. I mean, Raider Nation really has a way of pushing them. Right Cooper to the top of the screen and set up a little bubble from Michael. Uh, going to be a hold. Michael Crabtree from Derek Carr. There's a penalty flying on the play. I'm impressed with uh, with Carr. He's getting rid of the ball quickly. He knows where he has to go with the ball. He sees it fast. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask. Defense oh, number 22. With a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. That was only had, I think, maybe two incomplete. Yeah, there you go. Five out of seven. And then it's all been underneath, and they'll be setting things up. But I like the way Billy Musgraves calling the game. They're taking what's there. But I really like how Carr is seeing the game. That's the most important part. I, I hope they're not setting it up for tonight. I hope they're about to get these guys out of here. Yeah. <laughs> they get some of these young, young guys into play. They were going to give them the first half of the first quarter, and, and it looks like it's going to work out well. Some of the veterans have already departed, but uh, certainly an opportunity for a lot of new guys to get a few reps together. Card Murray oh, good call. cuts to the back side. And down inside the team goes Latavius Murray. James Laurinaitis had the tackle, an eight-yard pickup. Yeah, this, I'm going to show you again. This this is a big deal. See right there? That's Hudson. The cut, though. Hudson has made a great – well, you have to have something to cut, too. That's right. And, and this this offensive line, it's it's a work in progress. Menelik Watson's got a lot of skill, but he's learning. But Hudson on the inside sees things. He's the catalyst for this group. Two tight end set for Oakland. Murray runs into a teammate in the backfield and still able to create, reaching for the five. You know, talking to Musgrave, you know, he, he didn't want to call uh, Latavius Murray AP, but he kept he kept using yeah, he AP yeah, he when did. he talked about right. Latavius Murray. So, you know, five carries for 35 yards. I mean, this kid is really getting off to a good start. Musgrave, three years recently up in Minnesota with Peterson and by the way Murray loved watching Peterson as a youngster one of the guys he looks up to Murray is the lone setback they'll call his number again stuffed at the line trying to get off the right side of course Murray burst onto the scene in week 12 last season against Kansas City that 90 yard touchdown run had to wait his turn behind the veterans McFadden and Jones Drew, who have since departed, and Murray trying to show that he is, in fact, the man this year. Well, I don't think there's any doubt in the Raiders uh, organization's mind that this guy is the, the next guy who can come in and be very, very uh, good at the running back position for the Raiders. Inside, outside, high, right over here, Beth. That's what he should attack. Trips to the bottom, and the throw goes to the top, and it's intercepted at the goal line by Tremaine Johnson who had the pick six of Matt Schaub during their regular season win against the Raiders a year ago, and he's got one in the end zone as Carr went away from the trips. Yeah. The ball was a little too flat right here with Coop, and he had an under, a guy cutting underneath from inside out. That ball had to be high over the top for it to work. It wasn't going to work. That was well played defensively. A piece just the one second left here in the first quarter that last play the interception for the Rams yeah I'm really thinking that uh, Cooper right there is supposed to come flat flat and uh, down yeah there's no reason for Carr to throw that ball in there like that at, uh, so he started to fade to the right. top side allowed the DB to come back on the beat the Rams will take over first and ten at their own 20 yard line and it is Case Keenum who is now in at quarterback run it right short game 
Well, his night may end with an interception, uh, Matt, but uh, Derek Carr had some nice throws, a couple of decent drives. Yeah, and, and more importantly, he knew what he was looking at, and he got to it right away. Even though it was a pick, that's still a lot of good stuff he did in the first quarter. Second quarter, coming up. Welcome back to the Raiders Television Network. A field goal apiece for the Raiders and the Rams in that first quarter. And in his first preseason game for the new coaching staff led by Jack Del Rio. Well, Elizabeth, on behalf of the Raider Nation, I'd like to welcome our new Princess of Darkness here. <laughs> Great to have you. I, I feel like I might need a cape for that. Is that, is that a requirement? Kind of, uh, I don't know, but I like the way it sounds. I'd like a magic wand. That's for darn sure. Case Keenum. The receiver screen to Givens. Dragged down by Naran. Ball, one of the newcomers, the rookie out of Florida, trying to fight for a job at one of the linebacker spots. But one of the things that Jack Del Rio uh, talked about and, and Mark Davis was bringing in an experienced coaching staff, not only guys that have been coaching in the league, but a ton of guys that have played in the league, over 100 years of NFL playing experience on this staff. That has to be some kind of a record. I can't, I can't imagine any other team having that many former players as coaches. We'll give this to Isaiah Pugh. He'll run up the middle for a short game, but it looks like it'll be good enough for the first Isaiah down. Pugh. You know, that's that's an interesting point. And I'm going to say something that, that former coaches are going to dis not disagree, they'll deny. But there was a bias in this league. There was a bias against pl former players. The, the thought always was, that they don't know how to work hard, they won't grind away like they're supposed. That's a bunch of bull crap. And so I, I take my hat off to Jack because he's got a lot of former players, guys who've been there, who are doing the work, who are doing it the right way. It's it's good to see. Keenum throwing downfield, incomplete. Almost picked off by Jonathan Dowling, the second year man out of Western Kentucky. Seventh round pick of the Raiders last year. I'm going to get this statement out now. There's always a reason why DBs are DBs and not receivers, because they cannot catch the ball. <laughs> uh, what time was that nice remark that he had about DBs in the first quarter? It's, over. it's, it's over. gone. We that it was down. it. La didn't even last the half. And Dowling's a the guy there. Taking a good long look at, though. Behind Woodson and Allen at one of those safety spots. That's going to be a big question as camp progresses. How many defensive backs do you keep? Wrapped up there yeah. by number 31, He's Nico Keenum. Thorpe. Nico Thorpe's another one of those young guys. But here's the thing. In today's football, you have to keep a lot of DBs. You have to. Yeah, I mean, the way things are spread out, a lot, and they're playing inside. You got, you know, you got three wides, three by one, double guys inside, guys who can play inside, which are, that's the hardest position to play from a defensive player is that inside receiver because he has a two-way go all the time. So Especially with tight ends who are coming out as wide receivers. you got to have a safety who can line up and, and play those guys. Raiders looking for a third down stop. A little bit of man right here. Keen him out of the gun against the four-man rush. They've got the first down and the completion out to midfield to Stedman Bailey. Yeah, that was a nice little pick play that uh, the Rams ran right there. It's pretty tough when you get man-to-man -man like that. You have to go where your guy goes, and once he runs behind somebody, it's very difficult to get over the top and make that play. Yeah, he's got to be aware of that too, Tim. Anytime you get to the stack position of a receiver, you, you know what's coming in some way. So you have to have a, a, a plan for that thing because he still has a two-way go off of another uh, another player, and that's, that's a tough position to be in. So you have to take something away by position. Good group up front for the Raiders as well as at those backer spots. Ben Heaney, the rookie from Kansas, now calling the plays at the linebacker spot. The whistle prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty remains. First down. This Heaney kid is an impressive kid. He's out of Kansas. He has, he's got very good eyes. He believes his eyes. That's very important and impressive for a rookie. Most guys don't do that. But what he really does have is instincts. Playing that position, the best linebackers are usually washout running backs. But they can see things. 
Heaney has that vision. Ken Norton had that vision. That's, I think it'll serve him well. Linebacker coach Sam Sansuri called him a tackling machine. He didn't get a lot of credit coming out of Kansas where they didn't win much. He picks up a couple. C.J. Wilson, one of the first guys there for the Raiders. Yeah, C.J. Wilson Time out did a on nice job for an injured player. Yeah, he did a nice job of coming inside out, but that play was made by Asante. Asante came up and forced it back inside and allowed Wilson to come up and make that tackle. We'll take a timeout. The injured uh, Ram able to jog off the field. 11:30 to go. And Bill Matt Millen was talking about linebackers being washed out running backs. Matt, look at him. Uh, look at him go with the uh, neck roll and all. He's tired already. He's done. done. <laughs> Tim, that was 30 years ago. I'm still tired. <laughs> Got from behind, but the nice return from uh, the four-time Super Bowl champion. Two of those rings coming with the Raiders. Beth Bowens along with Mr. Millen and Mr. Raider, Tim Brown. As Keenum gets run out of bounds by Heaney and Ball, and then he trips over the bench over there on the sideline. Ball got caught, but I can tell you, Heaney got on his horse right there. That's yep. a heck of a hustle play to hold that to whatever it is, a couple of yards. He really impressed the folks at uh, the Combine. His numbers were amongst the best of any of the linebackers in the shuttle runs and the cone drills. That's good close. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's you, just, can, you can see that. Yeah. You can see that with him. I mean, his numbers, you can no tell on the field. I mean, the way he moves around and gets to the ball, you can tell this is a guy that uh, knows how to get around the field. He wants to play a little bit like Luke Keekley is what Heaney says. Third and nine, and the play clock winds all the way down to zeros. There is no foul for delay a game. There is no foul for delay a game. Timeout has been called by St. Louis. Timeout called by Jeff Fisher. Before that play clock wound down. <laughs> Jeff's begging over there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Got to get it in. Start early now. <laughs> We will take the timeout along with them, tied at three here on the Raiders Television Network. Back here at O.Co. Coliseum, three apiece, the Rams and the Raiders with the 2015 season of Raiders football is here. Purchase your tickets today by calling 1-800-RAIDERS or go to Raiders.com. Raiders staff members are in the office right now to take your calls for an exciting new season of Raider football. The defense trying for a third down stop. And the coverage was there by Keith McGill on Damian Williams. Yeah, nicely played by McGill. McGill is a high cut, kind of built like like Mike Haynes used to be. He's actually better, Tim. Mm. Well, maybe he got away with something there. Yeah, he did. He's actually a little <laughs> bit better. When he I gets, saw it live, and when, it was true. When he gets up on a guy and gets his hands on him, that's, that's usually when he's better. He's not as good when he's in that bail technique. Yeah. He was telling us the other day his uh, first year at corner was his senior season at Utah. He's primarily been a safety. And his holiday will let that go over his head and through the end zone for the touchback. You know, Beth, what you just said there, that is not easy to do. No. Yeah, first of all, he lost about 20 pounds. Yep. Second of all, on the outside, you're, it's a, it's a one-sided game. Playing safety is all about angles. Playing corner, there's angles involved, but there's a lot more. So that's that's a pretty difficult transition to make. Well, we were talking about whether or not we thought Derek Carr may come back out for uh, another play or two after the interception, and he was out on the field, and now <laughs> he will head back to the sideline. Perhaps he tried to sneak back in there for another play. I think he did. <laughs> you remember I asked him about winning a football game. I was going to call him on that. He said he wasn't going to try to win the game. If you got Carr out there in the second quarter of the first, the first preseason, you try to win the game. <laughs> the numbers for Christian Ponder, who is now in the free agent pickup from Minnesota. 14, 20, and 1 as a starter there. He did get the Vikings to the playoffs alongside Adrian Peterson and the carry for Trent Richardson. Beth, this is what I've been waiting to see. I want to see Trent Richardson. I can't wait to see Michael Dyer a little later. I want to see what Trent Richardson has. I mean, this is a guy who was dynamic in college and really hasn't been able to get it going in the NFL. And 
when you look at his numbers, when you look at who he is, you just know that this guy has the ability to really get it done, but he hasn't been able to get it done on this level yet. Tim, the one thing he's done, he dropped himself 20 pounds. He's a different guy right now. It's a little quicker, not as powerful. That's what it looks like. We will see. That's the first week of training camp with pneumonia as Ponder spins away from the rush to keep the play alive. And now Ponder with the legs sliding out across the 30 takes a hit. After a 10 yard gain, we've got a flag down on the back side of the play. One thing that you'll always see with Christian Ponder is he's a heck of an athlete. And sometimes that's been the knock on him. Sometimes he's more athlete than quarterback, kind of like Jake Locker and the knocks on him. But he has the ability to Holding. play well. Defense, number 58. By rule, this 10-yard penalty, 5-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. Well, you can see the athletic ability in this play. For him to get away from that tackle right there and get outside the pocket and pick up good yardage is uh, as a very good play by any quarterback. He got popped, too, by Marcus Roberson at the tail end of the play. But Thunder's been in a battle for the uh, backup quarterback spot with Matt McGloin through the first couple of weeks of camp. And now he'll work out of the gun. The give is to Richardson. Trying to find a seam. Gets out across the 40. Richardson. Of course, uh, Trent, the former number three pick overall to Cleveland, and that marriage lasted just over a year and a couple of games, and then went to Indianapolis. Was unproductive there, and the coaches have talked about his focus. He knows that this may be the last chance. He's even willing to get on special teams units if need be. We expect we'll see quite a bit of him here tonight. We'll take the time out with the Raiders and the Rams, even at three. Welcome back to the Raiders Television Network. The score tied at three. In April, Oakland Raiders owner Mark Davis announced an organizational effort to prevent domestic violence and sexual assault by partnering with the Bolitnikoff Foundation and Tracy's Place of Hope. Davis presented a $50,000 donation to Fred and Angela Bolitnikoff to help increase education in an effort to eradicate this horrible dilemma. In addition to monetary support, the Raiders will execute an extensive platform, including ongoing programs and public service campaigns to assist in preventing domestic violence and sexual assault. Beth, Tim Brown was there when they received the check, and you should see the look on Angela and Fred's face. It was priceless. Back to you. Yeah, that was a, a dynamic moment, no doubt about it, and a big heart by Mark Davis to get that done. Yeah, kudos to Mark Davis for that. And uh, catches made by Clive Walford, the rookie tight end out of Miami. And uh, so much being made about uh, getting back to the greatness of the old days and Fred Bolitnikoff. The honor that is named for him given out to the top wide receiver in college football. And there are a pair of Bolitnikoff award winners uh, in the starting lineup for the Raiders this season. And Cooper as well as... Crabtree as Bryce Butler makes the catch downfield, but a flag right in the middle of the field. 16-yard pickup if it stands from Ponder. It's coming from the deep sector there. That's usually against the defense. That's defensive holding right there. They tackled the receiver trying to come across. Holding the defensive backfield. This penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. Ponder really under this is a nice understanding of what's going on. And don't forget he. Musgrave had him up in Minnesota. And so all you're doing, you go play action, you come out the backside, and it's levels. So you have a guy short, you have a guy deep. If the guy's covered short, you look downfield, which he's able to do. You pick up a nice couple of yards, nice first down. Bonner joined in the backfield by Richardson. Bonner to the air, Walford nice. right up the seam, and the catch inside the 10. This kid right here, he's got a chance. <laughs> they are really excited about it. Yeah, and they should be. He's, he shows good things. This is nice right here to get back inside. This is a well-thrown ball. But see how he gets position on that backer? That ball was thrown perfectly, Tim. Yes. That's one of those passes you just can't miss under the circumstances. Give up the middle is to Richardson no, going his way inside the five. five. What you're seeing right now out of this Raider team is some nice balance. Mm -hmm. And so they're throwing the ball, setting up the run. Trent Richardson's had a couple of nice four or five yard runs in there, keep the thing moving. 
This offensive line has given time, and I do believe Bill Musgrave's called a nice game. They've kept him off balance. He has his quarterback on the edge sometimes. This is just looks really good right now. Richardson tries to spin away from the tackler. May have picked up a yard. Jolan Dunbar making the stop alongside LaMarcus Joyner. Let's take a look from behind Richardson. Nicely Ooh, done by Menelik Watson. See, these are the kind of plays when he go back and look, he's going to see that cut yeah. right over the center that he probably right. should have made. Well, you just referenced the balance, man. How about 13 run plays, 12 pass plays so far for Musgrave's new offense. I mean, so many new guys. That's quarterback draw here. Ponder to the end zone, touchdown! Andre Holmes! That was easy, easy. He beat him fast. Right at the line of scrimmage, like you should. Yeah. Well executed drive by Christian Ponder. And he finds Holmes in the end zone. Some good running along the way from Richardson. Look at the cup. Nice protection all the way across. But Holmes beat his coverage fast. That was LaMarcus Joyner. He got on top of him to the inside. There's no help back there. It was six quick. Ponder goes four of four. 47 yards in the touchdown. And are the Raiders here going to go for two? Going for two. Remember one of the new rules this year, the new PAT rule. An extra point is akin to a 33-yard field goal, so the Raiders will try for two. They haven't done this in the last two regular seasons, and they'll go for it here. And the pass right at the goal line where the ball to is. Tompkins. Yeah. The Did the ball cross the, the line? No. Yeah, he came back. He came back for that ball. I don't know if he broke the plane. Could have, he could have caught that ball on the field. Is it the feet where in the end zone? However, the ball never crossed yeah, the goal there you line. Go. The extra point is no good. That's a good call by Tony Corretti and his crew. And keep in mind, the official, the head linesman, was standing right there where he should have been. Once the ball is snapped, he gets right on that goal line, so he had a good view of it. And, and that's the play Tompkins really has to work the sideline on that. Yeah. And you heard Tony Corretti he say that. The feet were in, but the ball was outside the line. I don't know if he was touched. Oh, he was While we were away, the Raiders decided to challenge that call. And at the goal line, as they went for the two-point conversion, the ruling on the field was that Tompkins did not have the ball across the goal line. See this official right here? That's the perfect position. Yeah, he was right there. He, that's, he's exactly what he's supposed to do. Boy. That's uh, a tough I, that, call. That, that's a real tough call. Yeah. They now, we're at a different angle here, Tim, but he's not. Here's the guy. Here's but the look official. where he's standing, though. He's, yeah. he's actually in front. It looks to me like he was in the end zone when that ball touched his hand. That is a, that's a good look right there. I don't know if it's conclusive. Yeah, that's what you need to overturn go. it. That's exactly right. They don't have that camera at this game, I'm sure, to be able to get that shot. Tony Kareni, who was the referee for last year's NFC Championship game with the Packers and Seahawks, now making his way back out onto the field. Tony's been in it a long time. He's one of the best officials out there. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. The extra point is no good. Well, this this new field goal extra point rule is really good. It's going to be it is. towards the end of the year yep. with these cold weather teams and things of that nature where yep. they have to kick a 33-yard uh, extra, extra point, point to win the game. I agree. It's going to be tough. You start getting in Green Bay, Lambeau <laughs> Field, and you got to kick a 33-yard extra point. I'm not so sure about that. Well, the Raiders will have a couple of cold weather trips, potentially a road trip uh, to Denver in December to Kansas City in, or in early January. Of course, the good news is Janikowski was perfect on his PATs last year, and he was perfect on his field goal attempts from inside 40 yards. As Savecchio kicks it away. And Damian Williams will bring it out nice, nice. and taken down immediately at the 11-yard line. 
Bryce Hager. Gary Wilkins with the stop. Yeah, watch it on the top side. Go ahead and roll it down there, boys. First thing you're going to see is nice protection. Nicely done. And then once he beats, see he beats on top. Oh. Sets him to the outside. There's no help to the inside. So once he gets to that inside shoulder, it's over. Nice drive executed by Ponder. That offensive line, a strong ball game tonight. 156 yards of total offense for Oakland. 109 for St. Louis. That last drive, 10 plays leading to the touchdown. And now the Rams back to work. Isaiah Peed will get the carry. The fifth-year man out of Cincinnati he was banged up last year. Gary Wilkins with the tackle as Derek Carr talks with his teammates over there on the sideline. Wilkins is in the middle of that thing. He can run, has a little bit of pass rush skill to him, but Ben Heaney is also right there in that thing. That, that Heaney kid, he's got something to him. If he can make a couple of tackles on special teams, he'll definitely make this team. No, <laughs> you're right. Coming into the game tonight is the backup behind free agent pickup Curtis Lofton as the middle linebacker. On second and six to the air and out across the 20 to Stedman Bailey. Wrapped up there by Razai Dowling, fourth year cornerback out of Virginia that uh, the coaching staff and Marcus Robertson are keeping an eye on. Practice squad guy from a year ago. Keep in mind, these guys are, are learning this scheme. Ken Norton Jr. brought it down from Seattle. And it's one thing to have your OTAs and all those things in practice. And when it's, it's different in a game. And so there's a, there's a lot of learning going on right now. Third and one for the Rams. Peed off the left side and the cutback will get him the first down. Out to the 25. Benson Mayo Mayoa on the stop as well as Larry Asante. Four-yard pickup. Yeah, this is an interesting part of the game because this is when the second teamers are in, and you can tell that people are learning because everybody's looking at the sidelines. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> on the snap of the play almost, trying to figure out what's going on. That was nicely done by Asante, 42, getting down and dropping down inside and picking, coming up quickly. Run the reverse and some room for Gibbons busting his way out to the 40. Taken down by Wilkins. Let's go down to the sideline now, Nicole Zalubis. Thank you, Beth. As I mentioned, the energy down here is intense. And if you're not here, then you need to be. There are a couple different ways that you can watch the game this season. Of course, I have the best seat in the house, but there are some pretty good ones as well. If you want to watch the silver and black in style this season, introducing the newly renovated Platinum Suite. The Platinum Suite can host large parties, up to 30 people, and includes an all-inclusive gourmet buffet with access to both East and West clubs. For more information, on premium seating, call 510-864-5022. Also, for the second year in a row, the Raiders will be offering the field-level lounges a unique hey. premium seating opportunity, allowing an on-field perspective for the entire game. So call today for more information. I don't get fed down here on the sidelines, so buy those tickets, and you have the perfect package. Back up to you guys. Well, thank you very much, Nicole. And uh, Holding, offense, number 64, 10-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Holding penalty along, uh, on the Rams. Uh, we've talked about how quickly this team has to come together, and what an opportunity. First two games of the season will be at home. You've got a couple of playoff teams from a year ago coming in here, and a chance to really make a statement, Tim, about what kind of improvements and how much better you are going to be. Yeah, and, you know, this team finished well at home last year. I think they won the uh, last three three games at home so they should have a lot of confidence here this is the be best fan base in the, in the league so of course they're going to have them pumped up and ready to go single set back behind Keenum he's yeah. under pressure gets the pass away the screen sniffed out by the Raider defense well Asante is going to get the tackle and I believe it was Benson Mayoa who messed things up in the backfield. Yeah, Asante did a very nice job, not only making the tackle, but running through the block to get there. Because they, they were tracking him. So it's a screen, he sees it all the way, he's locked up in man, and so all he does is fight through the block and make the play. 
They always do a nice job of getting the pressure there. 16 games with the Raiders last year, including a start. With the third year man out of Idaho, you're looking for some more edge pressure. He brought it on that play. And we have reached the two minute warning. The two minute warning. Nine to three, the Raiders on top, courtesy of a Christian Ponder touchdown pass to Andre Holmes. Nine to three, the Raiders on top of the Rams. Two minutes to go here in the first half. And some, some of the young skill players chatted up about their first preseason action of the season. Latavius Murray and Amari Cooper. Nice start for those two right there. Nice start for those two right there also. <laughs> And Derek Carr moved the team a couple of times. Had the interception down at the goal line. May not have been on him. And then Ponder with another nice sustained drive for six. And that pass over the top and out of bounds intended for Givens. You know, one of the things that Ken Norton told us was that they're not practicing a whole bunch of different defenses. They're just, they have four or five that they're going over. And they're just going to make sure that these guys have it to allow these guys to play quick. And you can see that this rate of defense is playing quicker than I've seen them play in many years. The thing about Ken Norton's defense is there's a lot of things built into it. So you make a call, and then based off of what the offense does, you make your adjustments. You can see Heaney making the, the adjustments right now. But, Tim, your point is a great point because you have to play fast and you want to eliminate as much thinking as you can. On third and 21, they're just going to run it, and it is Ben Heaney who makes the tackle out at the 37-yard line. A seven-yard pickup. And the Raiders, it looks like they've called out. the timeout Oakland. here to stop the clock. This is their second. With 1.49 to go, and a shot here at a two-minute drill as they force the punting situation. So I would say... In this first half, to this point, the Raiders have outplayed this this uh, St. Louis team. So if you're a St. Louis Rams fan right now, that, you know it's a little unfair because you, know, you get the first team in there for just a little bit, and then guys are out. Like Chris Long didn't play, but Oakland had, wow. Oakland had this pretty mistake-free, no penalties in the first half. An offense generated some some yardage. Ponder took him down, got a score. Carr looked good. I don't know if we could just roll over that. I mean, the Raiders come out the locker room with three penalties on the board sometimes. Yeah, exactly. So, so for I them not to have any we penalties. We perfected right? that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, interesting here for Oakland. T.J. Carey is the deep man here. What about this one? No, it is a short punt and out of bounds. Not a good punt there for the Rams, and the Raiders will have a chance here with a little shorter field. It's a shankadelic right there. And as the Raiders trot out there, 141 to go. Reminder coming up at halftime. JT the Brick will be with us. We'll hear from Coach Del Rio as well. Nicole will get a chance to chat with him. And also a special feature on uh, the late Ken Stabler, the snake. Oh, snake. Passed away this summer, uh, one of the all-time best tops and touchdown passes and yards per throw nobody won better than the snake did back in the 70s i called him raider roar to him. he walked in the building everything stopped and that didn't happen for many many former players but it definitely happened for him i still don't understand why he's not wearing his gold jacket yeah. raiders will go with their speed back taiwan jones breaks a tackle Bruce Hager with the tackle. Stay there along with Bob Hubbard and Powell. Raider family members lost during the offseason. Number 81. The original 81. The original 81. Working down the field here in the final couple of minutes. Jones, nice blocks in front of him, and a burst out across midfield. You get Taiwan Jones in space. I, I don't know if there's anybody on the field that's going to catch him. He is. That kid can flat out fly. So all, they, all they're doing is just putting him in space. Let it open up in front of him, and 
A running back who moved to defensive back and now is returned to the offensive side. The pass to Holmes trying to reach. He lunges for the sideline to get out of bounds. And there's a penalty flag anyways. An 11 yard pickup. Well, if you can imagine Tywan Jones and Murray going back to back, I mean, that's a great change of place, pace yeah. for the Raiders. So they can have Murray come in and, and smash mouth and didn't have Jones to come out and do what he does. And we go back, uh, Tim, to Bill Musgrave a little bit, and they had a weapon uh, like Percy Harvin up in Minnesota, and right. they're hoping maybe they can move Taiwan around, uh, get him at wide out, get him on special teams, get him some touches. Yeah. Those kind of players in the leagues are very, uh, in the league now is very special. You have to have somebody sure. that you can hand the ball up to that's comfortable carrying the ball. It's di that's the difference between college and pro football. In pro football, you'll take Taiwan Jones and you'll match him up. There's a lot more matchups in pro football than college. Offense, number 88. 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. And I know it's early, and I know it's the first preseason game. But we jinxed him. We jinxed him. Yeah. Oh, that was the first penalty. <laughs> I Wofford, you can see him right down below. Oh, he blocked before the he blocked before the ball was was caught. So yeah. that's what they call them. It's kind of a picky call. Yeah, he'll learn. I mean, all he had to do was let the guy run into him right there. But yeah, and then raise the elbow result. right at the end just exactly. to get a nice one in. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the princess of darkness. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> that kid's gonna. That kid's a good player. Holmes is, Wofford, yes. He's got a chance. It, oh, it's yeah. a nice problem to have trying yeah. to figure out who's going to be the starting tight end because they've got depth from which to choose from. After the setback with the penalty, first and twenty, Ponder will drop it off underneath, and there's the other young tight end, Gabe Holmes, the undrafted free agent out of Purdue. Six-yard pickup. A couple of timeouts for the Raiders. The clock continues to run. And now a stoppage, they'll time take out. the T.O. Oakland, this is their third and final timeout of the first half. This is a 30-second timeout. Reggie was Reggie McKenzie, the GM for the Raiders, was telling me that he was very pleased with the tight end position because these kids are young, but not only are they good pass, pass receivers, but also they're very good blockers. Going to get an opportunity to see several of them tonight. A reminder, too, coming up at the half again, that uh, special feature on Ken Stabler and certainly a nod towards Marv Hubbard and Art Powell as well, who passed away over the spring. Big Marv. And anytime you got it down along, down that goal line, you could hand it to Marv. He was, he was getting in. Well, and uh, Jack Del Rio told us he wore Marv's number 44 as a high school player and Hayward Grace Butler will go across the middle there and inside the 45 they'll number hustle to the line final 10 seconds Honda will spike to stop it with eight to play here in the first half well let's see can they get three out of this at all mm -mm. With Janikowski uh, eight seconds Quick play, 30, down to the 35, 40, yeah. I mean, if you'd want to, I don't know if you want to do that. Regular season, you might yeah. want to take. Yeah. Or you, you see who's got some speed down the sideline or a post here. Yeah, you just have to. You'd have to be an out route, and get out of bounds, stop quick, and then uh, and then get Janikowski on. But you'd have to get out to stop the clock. The line to get to, at least for a first down, is uh, the 36. Ponder stepping up. He'll throw towards the sideline, and it's intercepted. I'm on Claiborne. That is the end of the first and half. And that will take care of the first half of play. Had had that not been picked, they would have had a shot of a field goal. Yep. Yeah. He, he just it just took a little bit too much time to develop. Try to float it over the top to Butler to get out of bounds. Listen to me carefully. Claiborne we was there. The time. We missed it on the first one. Listen to me carefully. <laughs> and the I officials, the officials uh, get messed caught up. with the microphones open. They're talking to one of the Rams players down on the field. Our score as uh, the teams head to the locker room. Christian Ponder with a touchdown pass to Andre Holmes. 9-3. to three. The Rams in front. Janikowski also with a field goal. And let's send it down to Nicole and Coach Del Rio. Coach, first half of your first preseason game as the head coach of the Oakland Raiders is in the books. Did it feel any different, or was it just a typical day at the office? 
Uh, no, I mean, once you get going, I don't think much about anything but trying to do my job and trying to lead this football team. So, um, you know, I thought we did some good things and um, some things that, uh, you know, we'll need to make, make sure we're doing a whole lot better. You had told us earlier in the week you were most excited about when the lights come on and who shines the most. Who were those guys tonight? Well, I thought, I thought offensively we moved the ball well. Uh, I thought the offensive line played well. I thought uh, it was good to see Coop get going right away. You know, Derek found him a few times. Uh, Crab got going. And then uh, uh, Murray had a nice, a couple nice runs. So it was good to see those guys get going. Coach, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Beth, as I send it back up to you, I just want to let you know, don't let the guys in the booth sell you short. You're not the princess of darkness. You are the queen <laughs> of oh, darkness. See, there you go. see? There you go. sticking together. Thank you very much, Nicole. Uh, pleasure to be here, Raider Nation. In the Coliseum and a 9-3 lead over the Rams, the preseason opener. JT the Brick back with our halftime festivities after this. And earlier they played fast, and I think it I think it was a good first start. And the Raiders will receive here to open up the second half. Taiwan Jones will get a turn this time. Raiders are uh, in the hunt for a return man. A lot of different guys getting a run so far in training camp. And Jones hanging on, barely out across the 20. He bobbled that one, but took it to ground. A 28-yard return for Taiwan. Let's see if he might stay in the game in the backfield. And it is number 14, Matt McGloin, who will come out at quarterback for Oakland. McGloin, the third-year man out of Penn State. He started half the season a couple of years ago, and then last year, just the one game of action in September against Miami. He didn't have a touchdown in that game, but primarily it was Derek Carr, the last season at quarterback. Christian Ponder has already thrown a touchdown pass tonight. The fourth quarterback would be Cody Fajardo, the undrafted free agent. And the first opportunity here for McGloin to Seth Roberts. Short game as he's run out of bounds. Matt McGloin does a nice job in terms of leadership. Matt, I think Matt's biggest strength is he thinks he's a Hall of Famer. <laughs> and and exactly that, that right. goes a long way, T, as you well know. Especially when the guy walks in the huddle like, look, let's go. This is what we're doing. So he's got he's got a little bit of command out there that you like to see. And it really came with the one season with Bill O'Brien that he had at Penn State, where he set all kinds of new records that Christian Hackenberg has since broken. But nonetheless, Jones able to secure that football as Fetty tried to rip it away from him, a three-yard gain. I know they can't be wide open every time they want to give the ball to Taiwan Jones, but those are not the kind of plays no. he wants to be running. Right, power, yeah. power G plays, it's not what he Time wants to do. Time out on the field for an injured player. That's Claiborne, who had an interception at the end of the first half, who is the man down right now for the Rams. The rookie out of Northwestern. Tim, to echo your point, Taiwan Jones is a player who needs space. Mm -hmm. And you want to get him in space, whether you're just dumping it outside in the flat, whether it's, it's a, 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 a quick pitch out in the you know, open like that. But those inside running plays, that's, that's not his strength at all. No. Well, guys, let's uh, take a look back a couple of years. If the Raiders want the improvement they think they can get this year, they're going to have to figure out a way to win some road games. you got to go back to McGloin down in Houston the last time they got one on the road. And one of his best moments as a Raider. You know, I, I called the Raider game on radio when they came to play the Cowboys. And this was a team that in the first half played lights out. And then... It just seemed as if they went in the locker room and everybody disappeared. And I believe that is veteran leadership. They had no veteran leadership. you got to have guys who know what playing in the fourth quarter is all about. And that's something I believe that, that Jack Del Rio is working on. Because inevitably, it's the guys on the team. It's your team. It's not Jack's team. It's, it's the locker room team. Third and nine here from McGloin. Nice throw. And he's got the first down to Seth Roberts. And a nice route by, by Roberts. He read the zone properly. Pushed him off, came back in that open hole. Did a nice job. Nice job again by this offensive line. We saw it in the first half. See how he'll push it off and then break Very back. Nice. Very nice route by Roberts right there. But McGloin did a great job 
One hit, ball is out. Yep. So the receiver better be ready to catch the ball because it's on his way. Receiver coach Rob Moore talked about how decent he is, Roberts, in his transition in and out of breaks. Showing some good hands there to hang on to it. Here's Butler, another guy that can be dangerous in space. And he's out across midfield and looks like it's good enough to move the chains. Josh Harper, the rookie out of Fresno there, number 19, with a nice block and a pat on the backside from Butler. I really like Butler. I He's think right. this is a kid who can absolutely can get go. it done. Yeah. And uh, it's one of these players that they have to find a way to get the ball in his hands, just like that play right there. I, I, I got to tell you, you know, this is the first preseason game. There's not a lot of game planning going on offensively or defensively. But I like the way Bill Musgrave's calling this game. And he's just taking what they're giving him. They're sitting back. All right, we're going to throw it back underneath. Probably here it is again. Same thing. Three catches, 32 yards. This is Chris Durham, another one of the new guys. Rangy at 6'6 and showing some elusiveness. Now inside the 30. 22 yard on the pickup. This is about as simple as it gets right here. Just turn around and, and let him throw you the ball. Look at there's the void. A, there's no route running right here. Catch the ball and get the ball upfield. I mean, this is pretty good for a big guy like Chris to be able to turn the ball up. Protect the ball right there with those guys coming from behind. He did a great job. Okay, see how the defense was holding, was, was sitting back? That's just, okay, you want to sit back? Kick. We'll just throw it right to you. And then even you pick up four yards, you're in great shape. And Chris was able to turn it into something bigger. Well, the University of Georgia where he spent uh, some time also in Detroit with Matthew Stafford, another former Bulldog. McGloin stepping up in the pocket, fires it down the middle of the field, and Holmes... Big target, the 6'5", rookie tight end with the catch. Nice job of McGloin stepping up. Nice protection. He has a pocket to be able to step up into. You'll see it right here. See Bergstrom, 70, doing a nice job. Holmes able to come down with that catch right in the middle of the field. Sets up a second and rear, very short. You know, we call that uncovering yourself in the middle of the field like that in the zone. You just got to find yourself, be friendly to the quarterback, and get, get yourself open. He did a great job just sliding a little bit to his left and uh, was wide open for McGloin. That was a million yard game, and now Michael Dyer has come into the game at running back. He's alongside McGloin, the undrafted free agent out of Louisville. <laughs> to the air for McGloin, and a big hit as Durham was trying to make the catch. Cody Davis jarred it loose. Nice throw, however. It had to be down low and inside. It was going to be a collision. I can tell you that a play like this should never happen. Somebody's wrong here. Either the quarterback is wrong or the receiver is wrong. And I would say that the receiver is wrong because he should be wider. You should never be catching the ball right there. You always should be on the inside edge of the numbers. That way you're away from the safety. Safety got there at just the right moment to knock it out. That's the first miss from McGloin. He's four for five, 46 yards. And the inside handoff goes nowhere. Marshall McFadden with the stop on Michael Dyer in the first touch for Dyer. And they came with some pressure up inside. They were anticipating that handoff inside to Dyer. I think we're going to like Michael Dyer. Now, I've liked what I've seen out of him on tape up in, up in camp. He's, uh, he's got some quickness. He has a little bit of burst. He's got some toughness to him. So he can run through tackles. Uh, fourth down, the 39-yard field goal attempt here for Giorgio Tavecchio. from Cal, and originally from Milan, Italy. And it is through the uprights. Check, it's an extra point anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> Raiders able to move the ball downfield. It stalls outside the red zone, but Tavecchio gets some points on the board, 12 to three. Behind the direction on that drive was Matt McGloin. Engineering a nine play, 56 yard scoring drive, the 39 yard field goal from Giorgio Tavecchio. So all three Raider quarterbacks have engineered scoring drives tonight. A couple of field goals and the Ponder touchdown pass to Holmes. One thing about Matt McGloin that I've always liked, he thinks he can make every throw. <laughs> Doesn't he, Tim? Yeah, absolutely. He thinks he can make every throw and he will try to prove you every time. I love his competitiveness. <laughs> and he's got the moxie out of Happy Valley. Sometimes he may not want to be so sure. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> if I'm a receiver, I'm telling him, hey, I wasn't open on that play. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> and it's Avecchio to kick it away. And, uh, 
is Daniel Rodriguez, who is back deep. He's a great story, an Army sergeant who has served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Young man who's won a Purple Heart and a Bronze Star trying to make an NFL roster. He'll bring it out to the 15-yard line. Let's check in with JT. Well, Beth, it's incredible watching Mike Tice coach here with the offensive line. He's the consummate teacher. He's a former head coach. He gets fired up at camp, and then he's getting calm here on the sidelines individually teaching. Matt, I think you'd agree to have a former head coach down here with this offensive line with all the new personnel. This is a tremendous addition for the Silver and Black. Back to you. I couldn't agree more. I've known Mike for a long time. I've known Mike since, since college. He was a quarterback at Maryland and he is he's got a good football mind but he is a guy who breaks all these players down knows their strengths and weaknesses and he will implement all that you'll see you'll see a good job from this whole line Case Keenum still a quarterback Trey Watts gets the carry denied behind the line of scrimmage a flag down Larry Asante we've been calling his name as the first man on the scene a lot tonight you know another, another statement about this coaching staff I, I, I've said this from the day holding offense number 67 this penalty is declined second down from the day I heard about this this coaching staff they're so good they're really good enough to win a game or two by themselves and when you have this kind of experience guys who have played the game at a very high level they should be able to win games by themselves almost and I, I believe that they're going to be able to do that in the tough situations they're going to know exactly what to do to get their players out of it Tice uh, certainly has to be pleased with how the offensive line has played. Ken Norton Jr. is first time calling a game as a defensive coordinator. He's got his guys out there. Keenum's pass is caught to Chris Givens for nine. Let's go down to Nicole. Well, alongside Derek Carr and Derek, your first preseason. It's your second season. How different does this feel? Oh, man, uh, you, know, the, you know, the rookie stuff is over. You know, there's going to be little mistakes that happen here and there. Uh, you know, but we're excited to get out here and compete against someone else in a live situation. I know that you said you really want to keep it clean this preseason. There was one tonight you'd like to have back. But when you go and you look at film, what are you looking for after this one? To make sure it's clean. And uh, that, that last play, the interception, we had a miscommunication. And, uh, you know, I'll get that corrected. I'll, I'll make sure that we, uh, we get that fixed and I'll work hard at it. And uh, it's better now that, that those kind of things happen where we miscommunicate or things like that. Uh, you know, but let's get that fixed now as we go into the regular season. But for the most part, I think we did good. How different is it with this coaching staff? Obviously, we've talked about all the energy in training camp, but to see it translate tonight out on the field. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just a different team. You know, it's a different feel. Uh, you know, everyone can feel it. You know, there's a buzz, you know, going around on the sideline. But we need to finish. We need to, we, we need to learn how to win. You know, we got the lead right now, but uh, as a team, we just need to learn how to win. Are you pretty pumped up? Connecting to Crabtree and Amari? Absolutely. You know, I, I knew I wanted to get them some touches, and uh, I'm glad that we could find them uh, a way to get the ball uh, to them. And, uh, you know, I think that they're going to be great. It was a nice glimpse of what we Holding can expect out of the Raiders offense. this season. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Nicole. That long pass play to Damian Williams nullified by the penalty against the Rams. And uh, I, I have to tell Derek Carr, he's not a rookie. The rookie thing is not over. He, he's got to get his three games in first. That was the rule back in the day. After your third game, you're not a rookie anymore. So oh my well, he's a quarterback. We won't mess with him. That was the rule. Tim, they, we had rookies for seven years sometimes. Right. <laughs> That was a good start for him. Yeah, he, nice he, job for Amari Cooper as well. And, 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 uh, and uh, Crabtree. I mean, that's what you wanted to see. What you yes. wanted to see, you saw. First and 20 and a handoff. Out across the 20 to the 24. He had a great statement Derek Carr did in practice this week. He said, last year, all I had was a film point of view just watching things on tape this year I've got a field point of view I've been out there and I've seen it happening live what's the difference well, the, the fact of the matter is and he said it he was a rookie last year everything was new Every, now he knows what to do so coming into this year even though it's a new system he's going to be a lot more comfortable with everything that's going on I will tell you this three years from now he'll yeah. look back at this year and know that he was still a rookie Keenum with the crowd making some noise, finds Givens across the 30, wrapped up by Ben Heaney around the legs. You usually don't figure this game out or get really comfortable with it till about your third year. 
And that third year is when it usually starts to click almost universally. And that's when there's that nexus of scheme, the players around you, what you're doing, how you do it. That's when you start to take off. Third down and six here for the Raider defense with Keenum working out of the gun. Heaney and Wilkins inching their way up to the line. They'll back off. Pressure coming from the edge. And a nice job by Keenum to hang tough and make the completion for the first down. Sometimes you got to give the other team credit. And that was a heck of a play there by, by Case Keenum. Keenum standing in the pocket with a free blitz for coming. Oh, yeah. Trying to get hit right in the bully bone, too. Just a great, great play by Case. That was Razai Dowling. Tough coverage for Asante, too, Tim. Yes, he's... He's an inside, he had inside leverage, and you're going to take that on him every time. Trey Watts, the deep back in the eye, a little stutter step, trying to get outside and does. And he'll have the first down in the Raider territory. Trey, the third year man out of Tulsa, and his dad may be familiar to football fans. J.C. Watts, the former quarterback at Oklahoma, and Trey himself, a former walk-on, and now trying to make it in the NFL. Finally brought down there by McGill and Mayoa. Stuffed in the heart of that defense. Big Leon Orr was in the middle of that. Excuse me, C.J. Wilson, along with Danico Autry. That's where playing in that dirt helps the defense out a little bit right there, you know. Can't get any traction, and uh, there's no cutting in that dirt. You have to go straight ahead. Tim, back in the day, you had the dirt, and all of us mysteriously, this grass got real wet. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Under five minutes to go here in the third. A little insight into the uh, sprinkler system here at the Coliseum from a couple of veterans. Outside the tackles, a big pop coming up from the secondary from Nico Thorpe. And then eventually wrapped up and taken down by Max Vallis. Another one of the youngsters that they're looking at. Just turned 21 years of age to Max. He was the youngest guy in the draft out of Virginia, a sixth round pickup. Max Vallis, he's, he's got some pass rush skills. Uh, what happened to him down there at Virginia, if they loaded up his plate, he didn't play as fast. And so you just, you have to give him bits and pieces and he's got some skills. He's, he needs to get a little bit more size to him yet. Rams converted on their last third down. This one a little bit longer. Third and eight. Keenum against the four-man rush. The pass is complete. Trying to reach for the marker. The receiver was he denied by Thorpe. Bradley Marquez, from Bradley Marquez who made the catch. They're going to go for it. They already sent them in. It's a nice job. So you give him, the, he's going to get the reception, but you have to stop him from getting the first with the tackle. And he does. Yeah, they already sent the guys in. Look, they're going to go for it. Fourth and one, and one at the 38-yard line. Get lined up first. In the flat. Get him on the rollout, and he's got his running back open for the first down catch. Zach Lasky, the rookie out of Georgia Tech in a nine-yard pickup. Dowling is the guy that made the tackle. Yeah, that's that's always tough coverage when you have play action coming right at you with a blocker, ostensibly a blocker, and then he slips you. That's that's tough. That's when you have to learn how to hold real quick. <laughs> Case Keenum doing a nice job at quarterback for the Rams tonight. He's 11 of 14, 74 yards, and the Raiders slow him down. Rams to the ground and slam to the turf. Benson Mayoa. Mayoa made the tackle, but uh, the Lumpkin, 93, is that 93 inside? This is, this is makes the play right there. That's Lumpkin. He makes that whole play. Mayoa does a nice job of coming off the block, but Lumpkin made it. And Asante and Ball held the edge there. 
The Rams have turned this into a 9-7 contest. Yeah, exactly. They're just running the ball and little dump passes, making it very tough for the Raiders right now. And second and 11, Keenum. Incomplete, looking for Marquez in traffic. Surrounded by silver and black. Yeah, Marquez found the hole, but Ben Heaney had a chance. Ben Heaney has, I told you about good instincts. Almost got his hand on that thing. I'm anxious to watch how he develops. I, I really like this kid's game. Now the University of Kansas, the fifth round choice. And on the 12th play of the drive here for the Rams, looking for another third down conversion. They keep getting longer. Keenum lost one towards the sideline, and that'll be out of bounds incomplete. And that's that's on the quarterback. Yeah. Because he was open and it came back on that defender, and it was there. Yeah, Keenum does a nice job of getting rid of the ball pretty quickly, but sometimes it's almost too quick. He doesn't know exactly where his receiver is going to be. And pass intended for Emory Blake, and they will not go for it on fourth down, fourth down here. Williams will be their backup kicker, Michael Pilardi, on to attempt a 48-yarder. The punter, Johnny Hecker, with the hold. And that will miss to the right. By rule, a missed field goal will be brought back to the spot of the kick. 2.07 to go ball. in the third. First Raiders down. will have some decent field line. position when we come back. We go here in the third quarter. The Raiders on top of the Rams, 12 to 3 on the Raiders television network. Sebastian Janikowski, a 44-yard field goal. Giorgio Tavecchio is hit from 39 yards. And Christian Ponder to Andre Holmes, a three-yard touchdown pass. Three quarterbacks tonight for the Raiders. They have all engineered a scoring drive. They are a combined 74% on their accuracy tonight. And Matt McGloin, five of six, will be back out there again at quarterback. And the give is to Michael Dyer, so a closer look at the young man who looked like he uh, was destined for stardom his first couple of years at Auburn. He won a national championship. He broke Bo Jackson's freshman rushing record and trying to get himself back on track here in Oakland. An injury for the Rams, and we'll take a break. Lake Merritt here in Oakland, where the Raiders and the Rams tussling in their preseason opener. Oakland on top, 12 to three. Final two minutes of this third quarter, and Matt McGloin has the offense out there right now. On second down. And give is to Dyer weaving his way out across the 45. Let's go down now uh, on the sideline to Coles with Justin Tuck. Yeah, with one of the defensive leaders, it was on the sidelines. Ken Norton Jr. right next to him was you. You guys were raw, raw for those guys out there. How did you get your teammates ready for this game, especially the young guys? You know, I, you just tell them, man, just do what we've been doing for the last two and a half weeks up in, in Napa, uh, going out there and playing with a lot of passion. You know, do, do your job. Uh, the game's going to be a little faster, but it's still the same game you've been played since you was in Pop Warner. So, you know, you try to try to tell the young kids that you're going to be nervous, but use those nerves to, to, to feel you to go out there and play a great game. You're the veteran leader on this squad. You're also the emotional leader. But when you look at a leader like Ted Norton Jr., what's that defense been like looking up to him, knowing his resume? Oh, my God. It's, 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 it's easier for me to say, look at him now. I mean, all the young kids, didn't want, you didn't want to listen to me, not listen to him. Uh, because, like you said, he's done it all as a player, as a coach. Uh, now coming in here and bringing all the, the energy that he brings to this, this team, not only this defense. I mean, it's contagious. And it's starting to trickle down throughout our entire, our entire team, for that matter. And it's not just him, this entire coaching yeah. staff with the experience that they bring to the Oakland Raiders. How different has this season been? Well, I think it starts with Jack, the head. He, when he first came in here, he was saying, you know, we're going to be loud. We're going to be, you know, going to have music at practice. We're going to expect you to be enthusiastic and, and have a lot of energy at practice. I mean, that's, I think that's the biggest change. And then plus you just, you know, you got guys, you got a lot of former players. So being able to relate to a lot of the young kids that's, you know, coming out of college and, and, and coming to the NFL. They, re they can relate better. So uh, I think a lot of our young quarter. kids are picking up things quicker now. Justin, thank you. Good luck this season. Back up to you, Ben. 
Thank you, Nicole. An 18-yard strike to end the third quarter to Seth Roberts from Matt McGloin to the fourth we go at a Raiders 12-3 lead. A beautiful night here on the San Francisco Bay where the Oakland Raiders in the East Bay leading St. Louis 12-3. And just what Nicole and Justin Tuck were talking about before the timeout. <laughs> Mike it. Tice with uh, one of the rookie linemen, Love John it. Feliciano. Dropping the knowledge. Oh, Mike's been there, done that. Yes. He's coached in a lot of ways. But the one thing he's very good at, A, he understands how every one of his players learns first. And then he coaches to what they do. That's, uh, that's a great strength for a teacher. Trying to get Bryce Butler some space to the 30. Ball popped out as Butler hit the ground. It was whistled dead. Second down. To the 30 and gain of four. We talked uh, a little bit about it. We'll come back to it now, guys. The second time around second as a six. head coach for Jack Del Rio and what he knows now and what he's tried to do a little differently in working with Mark Davis to get that coaching staff as we see Butler do his work to get the new practice facilities yeah. that they'll be moving into when they go back down to Alameda after breaking camp. Jack will be a better head coach the second time around. It, it's almost universally happens. Hmm. Roberts is the motion man behind McGloin. Took a look at Dyer and instead will throw to Butler. Reaching his way inside the 25. Matt is now 8 for 9. And over 80 yards through the air. Here's a look at the new training facility behind the headquarters in Alameda. And some of the renderings. This is what the players will see when they head back home to make their final preparations for the regular season. The heck were all those people standing around there for? Get them out of there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that, that's really great to see. The Raiders have had the same facility since we moved up here in 1996. So uh, to see them trying to do something uh, bigger and better is, is obviously pretty good for this organization. This is Dyer looking for some tough yards up the middle. Well, we talked to Curtis Lofton the other day, one of the free agents who Michael said, you know what, in years Dyer. past, I probably Go wouldn't have considered coming Raiders. here. But first down. the first guy I talked to was Ken Norton. He told me what was changing. He told me what they were doing here. And he and a lot of the other veterans have said, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of the turnaround in Oakland and to be with this staff. Yeah, I really believe that this team is really set to do something special. The, the one thing that has to happen they have to learn how to win tough games. And I don't know if they have the guys who have been in a tough situation, especially on the offensive side of the ball. If they can get that done, then they, they're going to win some games this year. McGloin on the rollout, giving directions, and he will hit his big target, Chris Durham, who got both feet down for the catch. McGloin looks sharp. Yeah. He has looked really sharp. Yeah, he's, um, he's in control. Well, you know, when you've started some football games, to be playing at this point of the game, right. that when guys are rookies and free agents yeah. out there, you know, it's almost not fair for, for McGloin to be out there because, I mean, this guy has played in some big, big games for the Raiders in his career. And to be fair, his offensive line is doing a nice job. Yeah, it sure is. All night long they have. They've, they've played pretty well tonight. Second stringers, first stringers, third stringers, and actually both the backups, McGloin and Ponder, looking pretty solid here tonight. Another hookup. Butler to the end zone. Touchdown Raiders, but will it stand? There's a penalty flag down. It's going to be offside on the defense. Offside, defense, number 72. This penalty is declined. The result for the play is a touchdown. 16-yard strike, McGloin to Butler. Good protection. Nice job of McGloin sitting in there with pressure right in his face ball right where it had to be the delivery of that ball yep. is perfect yep. it's before he Bryce even makes his cut out the out the break and that's just a perfect pass by, Mc, by McGloin Bryce Miller did a great job put the ball in the other hand though young man now they went for two earlier they did not get it they will try again with the 18 to 3 lead the numbers for McGloin 10 for 11 a buck four is the yardage and a touchdown pass. Throwing the fade to Durham, broken up in the end zone. So a couple of attempts at a two-point conversion fail. Trevon Reed was the guy there to break it up, but both backup quarterbacks looking good tonight for the Raiders. Butler finishing it up for Oakland.
The former undrafted free agent in his third year out of Penn State. Impressive on that scoring drive, going 10 for 11, 104 yards on the night. And he finished it up with the 16-yard pass to Bryce Butler. Bryce has been spinning the tunes in, in uh, practice training camp. DJ Duffelbag, I think McGloin. <laughs> McGloin may be able to get the next playlist out of him in practice on Sunday. Matt probably thinks he could do that well, too. I... <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Tobacco's kick goes through the end zone. Raider defense is out there with an 18-3 lead. Welcome back to Raiders Television Network. The Raiders on top of the Rams, 18-3 here at Oco Coliseum. And before the game, we saw some junior football players out there. Now we need some cheerleaders on the field as well. So we are calling all young cheerleaders. The Junior Raiderettes program is accepting signups until Monday, August 17th. If you are between the ages of 6 and 14 and you'd like to perform on the field with the Raiderettes, head to Raiders.com slash Raiderettes and sign up to become a Junior Raiderette today. Beth and the guys, back up to you. Thank you, Nicole. And plenty to cheer about with plays like that. That's Leon Orr, the rookie out of Florida. 6'5", 320, getting in the backfield. Big man and has some good skill. Yeah. He's uh, a little rough around the edges, but <laughs> he'll figure it out. Well, you can't play football in Florida and not know how to play. So yeah. if he was playing in Florida, he knows how to play the game. Four-yard loss on the play. A new quarterback is also in there now for St. Louis, Austin Davis. Played in ten games, eight starts last year. He did not face the Raiders in their regular season matchup. And trying to bounce outside across the 20 is Malcolm Brown, the rookie out of Texas. McDonald down at the bottom of the uh, pile there, along with Spencer Hadley, another linebacker that the Raider staff is looking at. We talked about McLuhan being able to take advantage of some of the young guys for the Rams. Now you have a kid like Austin Davis who played a lot for the Rams last year. Let's see if he can do anything versus the Raiders defense. Third and eight. Rams need the 30. Davis picks up the low snap and fires downfield for the first down to Emery Blake with uh, Saquon Edwards on the coverage and a 12-yard pickup. That ball was threaded because Hadley had a chance to get it. Wow. And uh, that, was, that was really tight coverage. Yeah. He may want to throw that a little bit more to inside. But yep. uh, he's probably trying to keep him away from the safety at the same time. Saquon Edwards on the top side and Hadley, Lamar Hadley right there. Ooh, I thought he could have got a hand on it. Good yeah. catch. That's what Rob Woodson says about Edwards is he's going to always be around the ball. He may get beat, but he's going to be right there to make the tackle. I think he's had a pretty good camp. I've, I've liked him. Coaches have mentioned his name on a couple of occasions. Bang. Play action for Davis. Hammered by Josh Shirley. Ball pops out. And the Raiders recover. That was a uh, that was a coverage sack. Took a lot of time. He was going to try to push the ball deep down the field, and Shirley got to him. Recovered by Stacy McGee, but the big hit from the rookie out of UNLV. And will Ooh. the play stand? Yeah, he may be, be ruled down. down when they take another look. I think they're going to call us down by contact right there. Nonetheless, you want more pressure from the Raiders. You're getting some tonight. Eighteen to three, Raiders with the lead. Will they have the football? Uh, they're taking a closer look at this last play, Matt. Yeah, you can see Josh Shirley. He's going to come off the top side. He's right up here now. This takes a lot of time. There's a couple things going on. They're going to try to hit this deep crosser. This receiver up here, he has to clear this out. He does not do that. That allows the safety to stay in the middle of the field and able to take this away. Watch this. He's going to jump it right now. See, this should be gone. He falls and doesn't clear. That slows the thing down and allows Shirley to come around the edge and make the hit. Third sack tonight for the Oakland defense. Well, we said at the start that we had to find somebody else besides Mac to be able to get some pressure. Maybe they found something. 
Tony Kareni getting his guys together before he uh, tells the fans the decision. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, it certainly looked. It's going to uh, be a the Rams ball. Yeah, the quarterback. Uh, After Davis reviewing the play, down. the quarterback maintained control of the ball and was down by contact at the 29 and a half yard line. It will be St. Louis's ball, second down, 14 and a half yards to gain. They will not be charged with a timeout. You're going to see him step up. Here's the hit. Now he's down. Right there, he's down. And he has control, and now it comes out. That's why they're going to give it to him. Said he had control the whole time until the end after the hit. Brown cannot cause a fumble. So it's second and 14 for the Rams. Davis under center. Looking left and got hit as he tossed that one out into the flat. A good push up front by the Raider D and it was Stacy McGee leading the charge. Third and long. Stacy McGee out of Oklahoma. They've had some good ones over the years. McGee. He's a big man. He's just learning how to play this game. But there's some potential there. He can he can just keep doing that. That's good enough. I mean, playing the game, pushing the pocket. That's what you want the big guys to be able to do. Oh, Jeff Will Franklin's had a nice nice day out of his down people today. McGee will come out. It's the dime package out there now for the Raiders D on third and long. Nine. False and start. False start here against the Rams. Will set them back again. Stephen Baker, 66 yards. Offense number 66, five-yard penalty remains third down. You know, Beth, this team, this Rams team is leaving here, going down to scrimmage the Cowboys on Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We've seen five or six of their players limp off the field. This is going to be a beat-up team by the time they get back to St. Louis and wherever they have to be. Well, one of their starters early. For yes, one guard. Yeah, they've had a couple of players nicked up and coming in already, guys. It was a young Offensive line, a lot of turnover up front for Jeff Fisher. No mercy, though, from Ken Norton. <laughs> and this Raider defense. They'll go ahead and run it here on third and long. And coming up from the secondary to wrap it up, Tevin McDonald, who's playing against his brother TJ here tonight on the other side for the Rams. Looking out of Eastern Washington, going to try and make the roster. And it will be uh, Pilardi on the punt. And it looks like Austin Willis is going to be the guy back at the 25-yard line to receive. He's the rookie out of Emporia State in Kansas. And he'll make the fair catch with a flag down. Both sides. Willis hangs out at the 24, a 39 yard punt. That could go either way. Either you got, either you forced him out of bounds or you didn't let him back in bounds. Or maybe he ran out of bounds without being touched. Yeah, and didn't I mean, come back in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I, you would say, yeah, see there, right there. That's what oh, they're yeah. out of hit, him, hit him while yeah. he was still out. Yeah. Now, I will tell you, don't tell anybody this, okay? <laughs> but back in the day, that was a Raider rule. And that's that's what changed the rule. Their unsportsmanlike conduct against Oakland, both gunners went out of bounds and were contacted by the receivers. This is a 15-yard penalty will be a force. Excuse me, half the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, the old Raider rule was if he came to the sideline, he was never to be seen from again. <laughs> <laughs> Second penalty of the night on the Raiders. That's it. It's been pretty clean, despite what Matt Millen said. <laughs> Back of the night for the Raiders getting set to go. It's Cody Fajardo, the undrafted free agent out of Nevada, who followed in the footsteps there of Colin Kaepernick. The only two guys in major college football with over 9,000 yards passing and 3,000 yards rushing. And the pitch is to George Atkinson, the third. Short gain. 
Pajardo out of Servite High School down in Anaheim and then played uh, played for Chris Alt for a couple of years and then uh, Bill Polian's son Brian was his coach a couple of years. And now the Raider staff wants to see if that can translate over into the no NFL, the that ability to sling it and also make something out of a busted play. Get the call again. Nice little stagger step. Bounces out across the 15 to the 18-yard line. George Atkinson. For George. Uh, spent yep. half the season on the practice squad and then played some special teams late in the year last season. Yes. Yes. This kid ha has some ability. He can really pick him up and put him down if he can get an open field. So uh, had some great runs while at the University of Notre Dame. Where? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I mention the University of Notre Dame? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting gold dome references, gold jacket references in today. I'm getting them all in. Third and six, awesome. Raiders. Pressure coming. And the throw out to Milton Williams, the third. And the young guys. Cody he won't get very far, but again, there's a flag down on the play. Offside. Ethan Westbrook, I think, is the culprit. Offside. Defense number 93. This will be a five-yard penalty that will be short of a first down. It will remain third down. Ninth penalty of the game for St. Louis. Short of a first. And, you know, Beth, I have to say again, I am really impressed with the Raiders as far as their penalties tonight. Using the first preseason game, you can expect that there are going to be multiple penalties on offense and defense. But uh, Jack has done a great job with the coaching staff and making sure that that's not the case tonight. They need a yard to keep the drive moving. And look to Atkinson to get it, and he goes. Nice job by Atkinson. And a nice job on the right side. Atkinson. But just a little bit of stutter to let it clear, and then he's able to hit behind it. Well, let's mention some of those guys up front uh, that are trying for a spot on the team, like Anthony Morris and Mitch Bell. They're 79, 74, 67, Quintarius Eatman up front. Number 63, Lamar Mady. Mike Tice getting a look at his depth here tonight. Well, you know the system is working when there's no difference between the first teamers and the third teamers right now. I mean, they're all playing cohesively and, and very good football. So Roberts in the open field. A nice block out there by Josh Harper to spring him free for the first down. Let's go down to JT. Thanks, Beth. Three Pro Bowls in a row for Marcel Reese. Let's go back to Kansas City last year, the big game that you had. What did the fans mean to you in that game, those fans right here in Oakland? They meant everything to us. And um, it really showed, uh, it was as a prime example of the character that this city has, that, that the, the Raider Nation has, and, and uh, the way that they fuel us. Um, you know, having a season like that and, and then to show up like that in a, on, a, on a rainy night, uh, a late night, on a Thursday night prime time and pack this stadium out in all black. And um, they, 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 they just really fueled us to be able to, to get that win for them. And, and we were happy to get it for them. Another new offense. How does Coach Musgrave's offense fit in for you? Uh, <laughs> it's funny you ask that. It's, I'm watching it tonight and it's just a fun offense for us. Uh, Musgrave, is, uh, he's, he's a creative guy. He's a fun guy, and, and, and in D.C.'s second year and, and surrounding him with, with different rep weapons such as uh, uh, Cooper and, and, and Crab and, you know, uh, Latavius now and, and Roy Hillou and, and myself and, Wol and Wolford and Rivera. It's going to be a fun season for us, and, and everyone's looking forward to it. Thank you, Beth. He knows how to interact with the Raider Nation. Back to you. Well, always the fan favorite, J.T., and certainly deserving of that. Uh, Three-time Pro Bowler, three years in a row. Pajardo runs for the first down, out close to the 40. It's going to be interesting to see how Reese will fit in there. He doesn't carry it a lot over the years, but he has proven to be a very good pass catcher. We've even seen him lining up his wideout it's from time to time in practice. Beth, he, he's a mismatch. That's what he is. Yeah. Yeah, he is a mismatch. I declare what he is. But it, with, with Cooper and Crabb and, you know, Tompkins or whoever becomes that third receiver, Bryce Butler, there really should be no room for him as far as passing the ball in, the, in, in a wide open type offense. Maybe you want to sneak him out the backfield and do some things, but you have to get the ball in the hands of explosive guys who can make real plays for you. Atkinson wrapped up in the backfield. 
Beth, that sounded George just like Hamm a wide receiver. Didn't didn't <laughs> <laughs> Give me all the balls. Oh, all of them to I me. I wasn't going to mention the fullback <laughs> bias there. I, I wasn't sure if I heard it or not. Well, see, Marcel really is not a fullback. Right. He's, yeah. he's really a receiver. And, and you can deploy him and put him and get him matched up on guys who can't handle that, particularly linebackers. That's where he'll excel. Four and a half to go on the fourth. The Raiders 18 to three over the Rams. Four and a half minutes to go in the fourth on the Raiders television network. The preseason opener for Oakland and St. Louis. Janikowski and Tavecchio each with field goals tonight. Christian Ponder a touchdown pass to Andre Holmes and Matt McGloin connecting with Bryce Butler for a touchdown. On second 11 to carry for Atkinson. We were talking Jordan during the break, guys. Uh, a lot of Time positives out. to build on Louis, off Louis. of this performance tonight as they get set now for Minnesota on the road next weekend. And uh, hold that thought. We're going to take a timeout and be back right after this. A little quarterback confab over there on the sideline. A couple of former Mountain West guys. Derek Carr with some instruction for... Cody Fajardo. How about the QBs tonight? 23 of 29 combined. A couple of touchdowns over 200 yards to 10 different receivers. Yeah, all some that. good intel for the coaches, Matt. Yeah, it really does. Um, the one thing you'd like to see, though, especially because this is the Raiders, they push the ball down the field. Then. Not at all. No, ball popped out there and uh, picked out of the air. Incomplete is the call. So you'd like to see that. And, uh, but most importantly, is you like to see what I, what I thought was the best thing here tonight was how well the offensive line played to protect the quarterback. And then it allowed them, the quarterbacks, make, they made good, quick Number decisions. Seven, the ball came Hayden out fast. Formation. All that, and that may just be all by design in terms of play calling for Bill Musgrave tonight. It just, you know, step by step, what you'd like to see is to just get some confidence in the group. You come out of this and there's something to build on. How about this? The first, first punt, punt of the night for that's Marquette that's King. First, first time we've seen him. A good punt. That punt chases the Rams back uh, close to the 10, 49 yards on the boot. And just four yards on the return. Marquette finally getting a, a workout. <laughs> I think he was checking out his hang time right there. It's a heck of a punt. Yeah, that was a nice high punt. And it was a spiral. I hate those punts. It was a punt return. You always want a little wiggle in the ball. You don't want that thing to be a perfect spiral. A lot tougher to catch. Than the Ron Ball, the rookie out of Florida. Fifth round pick heading over the sideline. A young man who's overcome an awful lot of adversity to be out there with the Raiders tonight. And fighting for a spot on the team. Sean Mannion is in at quarterback now. He's the new guy out of Oregon State, Foothill High School. You're right, out of Pleasanton. Eighth in Division I history with those 13,000 yards. That's best in Pac-12 annals. I think uh, I think Mike Madden, John's son, coached him in high school. For junior high, one of those two. I remember Mike talking to me about it. And of course, I watched him at Oregon State. But really well for Mark Ryan, who has since moved on to Nebraska. Isaiah Ferguson with the catch, the rookie out of Arkansas Pine Bluff, 15 yards on the game. I know the Raider fan base is excited about this team and some of the uh, changes that were made, particularly bringing uh, Jack Del Rio in here. Bobby Romanski, their the head equipment guy, and I were taking a walk the other day, and we came upon an elderly woman with a, in a walker. Of course, she passed us, but uh, <laughs> she, she said to us, oh, some Raider boys. You guys better turn it up a little bit. I'm sick of watching this. <laughs> the biggest kick out of that. That's a great Raider fan. And so did you catch up to her and say thanks had, for I, thanks for? I, I being had to a run back. You had to run ahead and say, can you slow down a little bit? Well, there are certainly a lot of positives, and uh, talking to GM Reggie McKenzie down there on the field pregame, they are really excited about the young guys with the 
right blend of veterans. You're looking at a starting lineup perhaps on opening day that could have 17 or 18 guys that have come from the last three draft classes and free agent groups uh, yeah. that the Raider hierarchy has brought on, and in particular the, the franchises on both sides with Mack and Carr. And yeah, that's, that's what Reggie does well. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a couple things that have gone on here that few people have talked about. One of them is they have gotten their franchise back on track in terms of being financially competitive. Uh, there were some years here they couldn't do anything. And then they also now have their their uh, their drafts, their full complement of drafts. So, yeah, so I, you know, I, I think I think they're in the right spot. And he drops it off over the top. And the first down, in my opinion, there's one more thing left to do. And that's the big topic of the NFL right now. They have to get a stadium. Yeah. You have to have the facility to really attract people. When you go to some of these other stadiums around the uh, around the league, they are incredible. You know, when you walk in there, it's like you, you walked into the into the future or something. So they have to find a way to get that done. If they can get that done, I believe the Raiders will be right where they need to be. That's not an easy nut to crack. Yeah. Right yeah. All. If things you used to start be. getting into public money, forget it. And they're uh, next trip will be up to Minnesota where they will be playing at the University of Minnesota in their next game as uh, the Vikings are getting a new stadium built. That'll be a homecoming for a few people with Minnesota ties including uh, Mike Tice and, and Christian Ponder and uh, Jack Del Rio. I think three years uh, there as the leading tackler for the Vikings. And I think a couple of guys who will be connected throughout the course of their careers, and that's the two young quarterbacks from the same class, Derek Carr and Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, Bridgewater, he looks promising. Out route just shy of the marker with that Minnesota game. You can see right here next Saturday. Tyler Slavin, Sean Mannion. Here's a look at Mike. Four years uh, with Minnesota, including a couple of playoff games while he was up there. <laughs> Incomplete. Intended for Tyler Slavin. And we are at the two minute warning with the Raiders a couple of touchdown passes, a couple of field goals tonight, and an 18 3 lead. 18 to 3 Raiders over the Rams. And as Carr talks with Crabtree, they've developed a nice rapport over the first couple of weeks of training camp. They were out there together for uh, the first uh, couple of series tonight. See a little bit more of them next week. <clears throat> the Minnesota, it'll be good to see. Touchdown throws tonight for Ponder and McGloin. And along with Carr, all those guys. Engineering touchdown or uh, scoring drives, I should say. The Raiders offense, a total of 319, 104 rush. Pass was completed, fumbled forward and out of bounds. By rule, the ball will be brought back to the spot of the fumble. First down. Razai Dowling is the guy that jolted it out of there. Twenty-two first downs tonight for the Raider offense. And the defensive unit holding St. Louis to just a field goal tonight, and that was on their very first possession as Dowling almost plucked that one out. I won't re repeat my statement from earlier. You don't have to. <laughs> that, I'll do that one for Ibn. you. Ibn. I appreciate that. Yeah, he was never going to be a receiver. <laughs> What do you look for uh, for Minnesota? We were talking a little bit earlier, as well as they threw the ball collectively as a group of quarterbacks. Did not have that over-the-top ball tonight. I think the longest pass completion was uh, 22 yards tonight. Yeah, so they're defining themselves. So what you yep. want to see most, though, Beth, is consistency. Mm -hmm. So you want to see consistency out of the offensive line. You go back and watch the tape. You'll see guys' mistakes, correct the mistakes. And then what you did well, build on that. 
I like what the O line did. I like what the quarterbacks did. And we talked about it before. There's some good things on defense, and there's some bad things, so they'll correct them. So next week, what you want to be able to see is taking another step forward, have the same kind of effort for a half, and then, then, then you may have something. I also like the way the coaches coach this game. Yeah, they did it. I, I thought, I thought the offensive line was coached and taught as the game was going on. I thought, uh, I thought Bill Musgrave did a nice job. For not game planning, keeping keeping them off balance, and, uh, and and I thought all that worked well. They're going to go for it here on fourth and six, 130 to go. And they need to get down to the 31 yard line. Delay a game, offense, five yard penalty remains fourth down. John Mannion could not pull the trigger there. That is the tenth penalty of the night for the Rams. Well, that was another area where the Raiders very un, un uh, Raider like. I hate to say. Right. <laughs> I think it was just the two penalties. Yep. Yep. And one was on special teams. So I mean, that's going to that's an easy easy play to clean up there. That wasn't disappointment in your voice, was it, Matt? Uh, you said just the two penalties. Yeah. <laughs> No, actually, that's, you know, that's what they've been emphasizing, and it yeah. showed up tonight, so that's good. Make a This is caught at the 25, but that'll come up short. Mannion to Marquez, and the Raiders will take over on downs. 1.24 to go. And uh, Oakland will put the finishing touches on the win here to open up the preseason. Well, Beth, I been around this team for many years <laughs> and uh, to open up a preseason I think this is one of the best games I've seen the Ravens play in a long time especially in the last 10 years uh, this time of year you see dysfunction almost uh, on the football field but everybody's on the same page everybody's doing what they're supposed to do it's been a really well coached like Matt said well coached team that has done exactly what they wanted to do tonight it wasn't perfect but you don't ever want it to be perfect because you want to always have something to keep uh, learning from. And uh, uh, I just think this team, as we were saying in the break, if they don't get cocky and think that they are about to win a Super Bowl, I think that this team can build off this game and really go into next week and, and uh, play even better football. And you look uh, upon this as a building block for Jack Del Rio and the foundation set. That Raider defensive unit, we've talked a lot about uh, the offense. Uh, Del Rio coming from that defensive side. Three sacks tonight and just the three points allowed. And they came early in the first quarter tonight. Well, I think if we're looking for any indicators as to how the attitude of this team will be, I think all, all we have to do is think back to Mike Tyson's coaching effort there when uh, Feliciano tried to walk yeah. away from him. Yeah. He's like, hey, let me tell you something. You get, don't walk away from me. Your rear end back here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The tone setter from Tice. And the Oakland Raiders will pick up the win over the St. Louis Rams, 18 to three. Jack Kowski and Tavecchio with field goals. Christian Ponder, Matt McGloin with touchdown passes tonight. And some good things coming from the Raiders side as Del Rio and Fisher Say goodnight here at the O.Co. Coliseum. 18-3 the final. We're back with more JT and Nicole right after this.